Hey there, Instagram. What's going on with you guys today? Hopefully you are having an amazing, uh, let's see, what is this? It's a Thursday. It is Thursday. This week has literally gone by. Um, I don't know about you guys. Hey, comedian Denise Carter, how are you? I don't know about you all, but you know, one thing that I know in growing this business is that sometimes we have to shift. Sometimes we have to change. Sometimes we have to do things a little different. Hey, she's CPA. How are you? Sometimes we have to do things just a little bit different than some of our competitors do. If we want to be seen, if we want to be heard, and if we want to be known, then sometimes that may require that we do things that make us feel uncomfortable and or make us do things that maybe we just don't want to do. But one thing that I do know is if we're growing and if we're going to expand, sometimes that takes us doing a little some things a little different. So I have a guest with me today and uh, we are going to be talking about business expansion. We're going to talk about it from what do you need to do when you want to expand your business. But I also want to share with you guys because I was on the call just before this talking with a client about expanding and she was talking to me about how nothing is working right now this time of the year December January and I was just expressing to her that part of it is her messaging and so one thing I know about messaging is that when we say I'm having problems messaging or I'm having problems with my marketing the one thing that I always ask is is your messaging clear? Is your messaging concise? Is your messaging consistent? Are you consistently showing up in the marketplace or are you showing up this week, skipping next week, but maybe showing up the following week? Can you guys relate? So I'm gonna pause it right there because I have some more tips, but let me just officially introduce myself for those of you who are joining for the very first time. Hey, Derricka, this is Dr. Cosette and White, America's number one tax and accounting strategist. I work with six and seven figure CEOs to help them understand where their money is going, driving that money in, looking at those key performance indicators, the balance sheet, the financial statement, that statement of cash flow, and helping them understand where they may be leaving money on the table. Ultimately, I am their financial advisor. I help them drive, cut costs, look at where they can be putting money for retirement and those types of things. I also work with my EAs, my CPAs, and my tax professionals to help them grow, scale, and leverage. I am a six-time best-selling author. I have written nine books. I am also a two-time award recipient of the Presidential Lifetime Achievement Award with President Barack Obama, as well as our current president, President Joseph Biden. You can catch me on Fox Television from time to time during tax season. I share tax matters, money matters, uh, money mindset matters, you name it. I am on Fox Television having those type of conversations with our viewers. I am very passionate about this work that I do, you guys. I have been, let me just say this. I'm not new to it, but I'm definitely true to it. I have been in this game for over two decades, almost three, y'all. I ain't gonna tell y'all, but almost three, <laughs> to be honest. But I truly love what I do. And if you are here in this thread, if you are listening to the sound of my voice, show me some love, give me some hearts. I want some hearts. I like communication. I like feedback. So just show me some hearts. And if you are a CPA, please put a one in the chat. If you are a CPA, put a one in the chat. If you are a tax professional, just put a two in the chat. For my tax pros, put a two in the chat. And my EAs, just put a three in the chat. And if you are here, and you're not either of those, that's fine. Just put a four because that tells me you are here to soak in all the knowledge. Maybe you are a business owner and you want to know what does it look like when we talk about expanding your business. All right. So enough about me. I want to make sure that I bring my guest up, Chance Weber, Webster. I'm sorry. Chance, I need you to come on. 
Ian, hey Denise, you're number four, so you're a business owner. Derica, you're number four, so you're a business owner. Great. Chance, you got to hit that button that says join and then we can get this ball moving. So while my guest is finding the feature, um, it's a button that says join in on the conversation, Chance, just in case you're not sure. But if you look all the way down, or actually if you go back up, it may be something in there that tells you that you can join in on the conversation, okay? So while we're waiting on Chance, I had a brief conversation with him and I'm not gonna spill all the beans about his goals, his aspirations. I'm gonna let him come on so that we can have this conversation. Let me know if you're struggling, Chance. I see you, I see you joined. Let me see. Let's try that. Y'all know technology is not always the best. I hit something, so you should be able to get something on your end, Chance, and you should be able to join me. I don't even see you up in here anymore. Okay, I'm going to give him a few more minutes to join me, you guys, but let me jump back over to the marketing and the messaging because I left off um, at Confidence. When you are expanding your business, when you are growing your business and you come to me and you say that marketing is off, your messaging is off. As I said to you guys earlier, it's a few things. It's either you're not clear, you're not talking to your ideal client, your category of one. The message is not being conveyed in a manner in which he or she understands you. You're not very concise. You're all over the place. And if you are all over the place, guess what? No one is going to, here he comes. No one is going to believe and convince them. Okay, you gotta be clear, you gotta be concise, you gotta be confident. Um, and also, you gotta be compelling, you all. If you are not compelling, if you're not telling stories that people wanna hear, then guess what? Your marketing is off. Your marketing is how people find you when people find you they convert to paid clients so again i'm gonna go back to messaging and marketing if you call yourself marketing every day make sure the messaging is clear make sure it's concise make sure you are consistent so chance i wasn't finished but you jumped in so i'm gonna finish and come back how are you today doing good how you doing i am fine thank you so much for joining us on this thursday uh you and i should be doing a tax return right about now or looking at some numbers I know, right? but we are <laughs> um educating our communities you guys i'm gonna turn it over to chance tell them who you are chance what you do and how how you serve your clients okay first i would like to say i appreciate you allowing me to get on this call um it took me a minute because i was trying to do it on the laptop and for some reason it just wasn't working nope. So I had to switch over to my mobile device, which is a lot easier doing that. Yes, but, we we here, we here. <laughs> but but basically, um, I have my own business called CW Business Solutions. Um, I was learning about business for years until I actually decided to get in business. Um, I noticed it was a lot of people who struggled when they got in business. They they didn't understand like um how to transition and grow the business because a lot of times we get into it because we just like we don't want to work for ourselves we want to work for ourselves and not work for somebody else so once we get in business we only know to go in and actually do the work and we don't know how to actually grow the business so when i when i actually got into business um i learned that not only that people need help with uh, growing the business but actually understanding finances so basically what my business does is I focus on tax strategies, which I help people with uh, reducing their taxes, doing tax preparation, um, doing the actual startup of business, so business formation, and also business consultations. And those are very effective with people who um, struggle with their business and not understanding what should they be doing different. So what are some strategies that you would give them for tax strategies, tax planning this time of the year? heading into a brand new year what would you tell them uh well of course you know we can't do anything for last year um but a lot of people want to know about um 
paying the kids. That's one of the big strategies that a lot of people are learning or we're teaching is that um, they find themselves paying the kids allowances and stuff like that, but um, they don't know that they can actually put them on payroll. So that, and then also, um, and I'm sure you understand this by switching when you're LLC instead of filing your Schedule C, um, switching over to an escort. So, and that reduces your tax bill because it reduces that self-employment when you're able to put yourself on payroll. So let's talk about that for a minute because you said one thing and I just want to reiterate this one thing. There, there are a few steps that they can still take before they file their taxes. They can contribute to a, in, a IRA by April 18th and still allow that to be a contribution um, for 2022 tax year. But if you guys do this, you must specifically tell your financial advisor that that contribution is for tax year 2022. So that is really one thing that you can possibly, it's not a possibly, you can still do for all of the all of you who are listening. Let's talk about, you said something about hiring the kids. What's the um, limitation on hiring the kids so that they can write it off as a deduction and not have the child file a tax return? Uh, you, want to, you want to keep it under the standard deduction. So um, most people keep it around maybe $12,000 but you want to make sure it's under the standard deduction of a, a single person. Right. So for those of you who don't know, find out what that standard deduction is. It changes every single year. This year is right at 13850 for a single individual. So if you were hiring your child and you wanted to write off that amount, you could hire your child just as long as he or she was of reasonable age based upon the tasks that you are having him or her do. Now, we can't say that our child's household allowances, or excuse me, our household chores are part of the job duties. That's not how it goes. No, the child should be doing something in the organization, in the business that helps generate revenue for the organization, helps with efficiencies in the organization. Efficiencies are filing. Efficiencies are making phone calls because you make phone calls to generate revenue to bring in new clients to find out what's a problem. So it has to be something of that nature. It could be your social media person. He, he or she could be your photographer while you are going around about doing your business and he or she is snapshotting you and putting that on social media. So it has to be some thought put into it. It's just not, I'm gonna go hire, I'm gonna put the, the a four year old on payroll and he gonna dance in front of the, uh, the computer all day and we gonna call that a, a job no 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 let's make it have some reason to it you guys so i want to talk about when we talk about expansion and i want to this is for you chance specifically and i asked you this question for a reason and you, you gave me the answer and i'm glad <laughs> so i asked chance and this is for all of you guys i need for you to pull out a pen and a paper because chance and i are about to do some math we're gonna do some math together and see if it makes sense because I want you guys to apply the same methodology that I'm going to go through with Chance. So you said to me, Chance, that you had a quarterly goal. Right. And I don't want to give what your quarterly, I'll give a number. I won't give yours. But I want to ask you, how do you, um, how do you expect to reach that goal? So in order to reach a goal, so let's say if um, whenever you, you set a quarterly goal, you want to make sure if it's you're trying to actually improve your business, that it's something that some that you can't just do physically by yourself. So when setting a quarterly goal, let's say if I, I was to set a goal that um, I know I can meet just based off meeting a bunch of clients, um, you, you can still reach that peak, that peak that you can't exceed. So in order to have to make that quarterly goal, you're going to have to do something which it, you're going to need someone else, hire someone else to work with you and have a, have multiple clients and then also create multiple streams of income or additional stream of income in your business. So then you're going to have to start offering some type of product. So um, in order to meet my quarterly goal, I know it, mean, it means I will have to do something other than what I've been doing. And now I need to start implementing and adding more products and uh, different services and also creating other partnerships that can create, a, create an income that I, I don't have to be actually doing myself or it could be making money when I'm not like actually working. Okay. 
So I'm just going to toss out a scenario, you all. I had a client two weeks ago came to me and go with me for a second uh, chance, told me that his quarterly goal was $100,000. So I want to help you guys who have these goals, just like Chance shared with me some of his goals. I want to talk about how can we back into achieving that goal. Now, Chance just gave me some things that he needs to add in order to reach his quarterly goal, him or someone else, but I want to go with you guys and let's do some simple math. My client told me that his goal was $100,000. So I like to start with the end in mind. If my client who is in this industry stated that he wanted to do $100,000 in this quarter, that's January, February, and March. To me, and I did my homework, there's 90 days in a quarter. There's 90 days in quarter one. So if we took his $100,000, you guys divided that by 90 days, that means that he would need to bring in at least 1113 a month. I mean a week, a day, a day, $1,113 a day. Okay. So then we would need to back into what's his pricing and what are the types of services that he prices. So my client uh, predominantly serves S Corps, C Corps, and LLCs. So let's just assume and I did the math and you guys hopefully you writing this down if we did three 30 LLCs 30 S corps and 30 C corps that's 90 returns that we are doing let's just hypothetically say I'm just throwing out some numbers if he did 90 returns and they were all at the price of twelve hundred dollars then he would reach his goal so we got to start with the end in mind. But Chance, Chance said to us that right now he had some things that weren't working. He needed to hire. He needed to add some additional services. So is that going to prevent you from reaching your goal, your goal this month, this quarter, uh, Chance, if these things aren't in place? That's correct. So what would it look like? to bridge the gap, what would you need to do if you did not achieve those goals? If, are you saying if I didn't? Well, okay, so if you didn't, if you don't have those things in place and you don't achieve those goals that you share with me for, for first quarter, what would happen? Then I, I would definitely have to make a change that next quarter and, and actually implement that. But if it didn't, if it didn't work, like if I actually use my, um, if I had a plan in place and I was working that plan and it didn't work, now you need to, you need to change and do something. Okay. But so I, I heard you say earlier that you needed some new services. I heard you say that there was a need for expansion. You needed um, more. I'm going to use the word partners, partners, right. team players, whatever, to help you achieve that goal. Right. So in order to close that gap, there are some areas of deficiencies, so to speak right Definitely. so i would ask of you as we're talking about expansion and as we're talking about goals to maybe go back and revisit the goals that you have set and realign them we're at the end of january right so that means we have roughly uh let's just say uh what is this let me do, we have roughly just say 60 days left so that would mean you would need to look at where you are thus far with 60 days left. Do you think you're going to have an incline? Do you think you're going to pick up? Do you think it's going to stay at a standstill? Where do you think that the next 60 days are going to drive you in order to hit the goals that you want by March 31st? Oh, definitely incline. So you see an incline? Correct. Okay. All right. So my next thing is, do you feel the need that you have to add additional services? Oh, definitely. And are the prices in alignment with the goal that you shared with me earlier? Are your pricing or your prices in alignment to hit that goal? Um, I think uh, not in the current state, but that's why I say definitely we have to add additional services or different or additional products to, to achieve that goal. Okay, great. So 
Now, you and I both know it's probably not the time right now to try to add services. But you can, you can realign your pricing. You can realign your pricing. I have no idea what it's at, where it's at. Um, and you can also add individuals to your team to help you with the calls. You can also increase the marketing. And I know that I started talking about marketing and that's an area where a lot of people struggle in the marketing. We are not going to capture the audience in which we want our ideal client if our marketing is off, if our messaging is off. So with our messaging, like I was saying, it needs to be clear. It needs to be concise. It needs to be consistent. We need to show up with confidence. It needs to be compelling. It needs to be contrarian. And we need to learn to tell more stories that exude the pain points of our ideal client so that we are talking to our client and they are coming to us and we are taking our marketing to be found. And that marketing, once they find us, they are converting to our, preferably, our paid client. So... As we talk about business expansion, I'm hearing you say you need more team team members and you can expand by marketing. Is that correct what I'm hearing you say? Yeah, for the for the most part. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I also like ad adding the products. Okay. So besides these things, when a business is looking to expand, what other tips do you have? that you would leave them with? Um, what's an example of what type of business you mean? Like, yeah. Okay, I'll give, you, I'll give you an example. So like, let's say, let's just say um, I was a barber, right? And I was um, cutting hair and I was, I was on, but I was only doing it by myself. Um, a good ex expansion opportunity would be getting my own shop and then leasing those, those spots out to additional people. So that's an additional income. Or if I decide to actually keep those spots and then hire additional barbers, because you can only cut so much in a day. Right. So a, a good thing would be doing, like hiring additional barbers and then also um, creating your own product, which let's say um, they wash hair. And so you let's say wash hair and then you, instead of purchasing other shampoo, create shampoo. So now you created a product. And then they see the results because you're using it on the hair when you actually couldn't. But when they see that that's great results, not only are you selling the shampoo, the conditioner, but you're also actually cutting the hair. And then you got other people in the shop who actually either you're leasing a spot to or they're working for you. And the money generated business is more than what you're paying them. Right. That's a good example. And I will share an example with you, a live example. A client of mine, she was the one standing behind the chair doing the hair. She was a hairstylist, was a hairstylist. She decided that she wanted to come from behind the chair, but still be in a position to utilize all the years of services that she had in making women and men look great, looking fine. So she started with hair care products. She started building hair care products. It wasn't her, but the manufacturer. And we're talking about the blow dryers. We're talking about hair shampoo. We're talking about conditioner. And it's, she started this on the onset of pandemic when the barber shops were down, the salon shops were down, et cetera, et cetera. So when we talk about expansion, even though she had that business and she was coming from behind the chair, she took a concept and ran with it. And it was, it was dynamic because it occurred during pandemic and her sales, just from that idea that she had, she hit over a million dollars, you guys. She hit over a million by having some things in place, shipping, freight, the design, the packaging, a freight shipper, all of this. But that was her way of expanding. That expansion led her to other products pertaining to the hair care for African-American men and women that she can sell. She was selling specifically for the women and she crossed over to the men because as we know, men cut their hair, the beard, the shaving, all of those things. Even, I think she even has um, 
a vitamin for growing the hair. But that is a great example of expansion. And I wanted to just add my, my, my story about my client, um, Silk Out. I'm going to give her a shout. Silk Out is the name of the company um, that, show, that sells the hair care products. Silk Out. Okay. So where can they find you? Um, you can you can find me on Facebook. Uh, look up my business, CW Business Solutions, or you can just put in my name, Chance Webster, and you find my business from there. Or you can look me up on Instagram. On uh, my Instagram page is One Chance Webster, and then you can find my business page on CWBusinessSolutions.org. So, if you had to leave the viewers, the listeners, and anyone who's going to come back, um, any advice? What advice would you tell them? Um, my advice would be don't don't afraid don't be afraid to actually um go for things that you want um just know what you want in life um create a strategic goal and set plans set objectives and then you want to set timelines so you can try to meet those timelines and so basically just create let's say i i want to do something in a year um create short term short term goals so you can get those accomplished right and, and i'm gonna throw this out make sure they're smart goals make sure they're very specific Make sure they're measurable, attainable, realistic, and there's a timetable set to all of them. Guys, you can find me right here on Instagram or any platform for that matter at Dr. at Cosette and White. I am on, um, gosh, my phone is, they just coming through. I am on YouTube at Dr. Cosette and White. And if you are a tax professional, an enrolled agent, a CPA, I want to invite you to Thrive Live. Thrive Live is a three-day conference. Number one, I love saying this, you will have the opportunity to earn up to 12 continuing education hours. If you are stuck in a place where you're not sure how to get to the next step, if you are continuously touching documents over and over and over again because you don't have systems in place, things in your office are not automated. If you're stuck on mar marketing, which I know so many of us are, it's because you are not, clear, concise, consistent, confident, and so much more. There is a key to marketing, you guys. When you understand the psychology behind marketing, then and only then will you begin to find out when, let me say this, then and only then will you begin to start converting. Then and only then will you begin to start talking to your ideal client. So Thrive Live is three days. All you guys got to do is click the link. Click the link above. I want to work with you guys because one thing that I do know is that at the end of April, most of you will have earned the bulk of your revenue. If you have a huge, gigantic goal and you're not there come April, the end of April, I want us to meet so that I can help you bridge the gap. I want to be the one to help you carry out this huge goal that you have so that you are attaining it and you are watching the milestones and you are doing what we call next level in, in your business. I want to meet you. I want to greet you. All the information is up top in my bio. Click the link and you will get all the information. It is here in Los Angeles, California, May 11th through the 13th. In the meantime, thank you guys for joining us. Keisha, I am Davia Greensboro. I can't even read this. Notary, Rudy, Billionaire Boy. Oh, y'all, I'm not going to even mess up everybody. <laughs> and a chance. Thank you so much for, I got to ask you this question now since I just said your name. Where'd they get your name from? Uh, uh, you know, when I was, um, before I was, like, when I was, before I was born, my, my mom used to watch this show like an old soap opera. And there was a guy on the name Chance and she. She went with it. <laughs> okay, got it. <laughs> I had to ask you that. Um. But thank you so much for taking time away from your busy schedule. I know that we are both in the midst of season, the midst of the phones ringing, but we are educating, empowering, and inspiring our viewers. Um, you guys, make sure you follow Chance. He just gave you his handles to follow him on Facebook, the name of his business, as well as right here on Instagram. So before you guys leave this live, just go right on over and just click. You can see his name and just click it and start following him. Make sure you guys continue to follow me. Have a lovely day. And again, thank you so much, Chance. All right. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye.